From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Mrs. Gottler speaking. Gottler? I'm Kathleen O'Dare's landlady. Oh, yeah. And that's word you wanted to talk to me. That's right. I'm trying to find Miss O'Dare. Do you know where she is? You're a friend of hers? I think I will be once I meet her. I'm an insurance investigator. I want to help her. That's what the other one said. The... What do you mean? What other one? The fellow that come up here a while ago, short, mean-faced, shifty-eyed. Benny Stark? Was that his name? He didn't say, Mr. Dollar. I guess he was too busy. Busy? Doing what? Breaking my good right arm. I'll be right over. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, New York City, to the Home Office, Trimutual Insurance Limited, Hartford, Connecticut... Assignment, the Nick Shearn matter. Expense account continued. Item five, $2.30. Taxi to Mrs. Gottler's rooming house, the place Kathy O'Dare had called home until she disappeared. Come in. Get your hands up. Mrs. Gottler. That I am. Uh... Well, look, I'm Johnny Dollar. I talked to you on the phone. It's all right. You can put that gun down. Well, I guess it's you all right. I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar, but I've only got one good arm left, and I'm aiming to keep it. Pull up a chair. Thanks. Oh, kind of rough boy, huh? Uh, I'd have showed him who was rough if I could have got a hold of my gun. I'd have blasted him, Christmas week or not. I'd have blasted him, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, I know how you feel. And me with all these presents to wrap. How can you wrap presents with one arm, Bad as being a paper hanger? Well, I'll be glad to help out, Mrs. Gottler. I won't guarantee what they'll look well, like. Well, I sure do appreciate it. And don't worry about their looks. I got to get them wrapped, that's all. Oh, let's see now. Uh, this paper goes on that one. Oh, all right. It's a water muffler for my nephew over in Brooklyn. You know them terrible winters they have over there. Oh, yeah, they're frightful. Of course, it may be better this year. The Dodgers won the pennant. Ah, nothing but luck. It won't happen next year. <laughs> you never know. Hey, tell me something, Mrs. Gottler. How come Benny worked you over? Hmm? Why did he break your arm? Here. Stick this card on it huh? as soon as you get the ribbon tied. Oh, okay. No time of year like Christmas, I... Well, he wanted to know where Kathy went. When I said I didn't know, it jumped onto me. Said it was lying. If I could have got hold of that gun... Where uh, did she go, by the way? You aiming to break my other arm, Mr. Dollar? With all these packages to wrap? Here, hold your finger on that knot. I'll tie it tight now. Them postmen in Brooklyn are always busting things open. I don't know. There. Well, that's one down. Where did you say she went? Oh, I didn't. No, this one I'll deliver myself, so it don't need to be wrapped so careful. All righty. Kathy lit out of here in the middle of the night. You think I'd sit up 24 hours a day spying on my rumors? You might, if the rumor happened to be one of your special favorites. Who told you that? What's the difference? She was, wasn't she? Kathy was everybody's favorite. Anybody that ever met her. Oh, you'll meet them as make remarks about a girl that works in a nightclub. But I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Dollar. Kathleen O'Dare is a finer lady as you'd ever care to find. And I would care to find her. Well, good luck to you, then. And if you do, let me know where she is. You helped her pack, didn't you? Now, how did you know that? Here, here, here. That's about as good as I can get it. Be careful when you deliver it, though. It's not tied very tight. I didn't know, Mrs. Gottner. I was guessing, but it figured. Kathy was scared half to death when she packed up and left here. All she had in her mind was to run and hide... She wouldn't have thought of stripping that flat, taking out every bit of personal identification. Somebody had to help her. Now, where'd she go? I don't know. Look, look, you don't get the idea. I'm on her side. She's up against a rough deal and doesn't even know it. You've had a sample of the way those boys play, and that was only a sample. With Kathy, it'll be a whole lot worse. They're looking for her, and sooner or later they'll find her. Her only chance is for me to get to her first, so you... I'm not lying, Mr. Dollar. I don't know where she went, and that's the truth to help me. Tried to get her to tell me, but she wouldn't. She said if I knew it would be dangerous for me. I helped her pack, yes, but I don't know where she was going. Well, that's that, I guess. I don't know where to turn next. She apparently didn't have any other close friends. I don't even know what she looks like. I've never even seen a picture of her. I was hoping you well, could... Well, if that'll do you any good, I've got one right here in my sewing basket. One what? 
A picture. What did you think? She gave it to me about a year ago. But she'd never had many taken, but here it is. Thanks. Real pretty girl, don't you think so? Yeah, she's lovely. Well, at least I'll be able to wreck... When was this taken, Mrs. Gabler? Now, how should I know? Three or four years ago, I guess, before she came here to the city. This photographer's address, the name of the town, is that where she came from, Brambury, Michigan? Well, yes, that's her hometown, Brambury. I'd forgotten the name of it. And she was just talking about it a week or so ago. She wanted to go home for Christmas, but she said she couldn't see. Mr. Dollar, do you think she might? Maybe. It's the most likely place a scared girl would run to, home. Anyway, it's worth a chance. Mrs. Gottler, <clears throat> I love you. Why, Mr. Dollar? Why, Mr. Dollar? Expense account item six, $88.35. Hotel and Incidentals in New York and transportation to Brambury, Michigan. Brambury turned out to be a lumber village, half hidden among the pine-covered hills. It was a little bigger than a wide spot in the road, but not much bigger. A foot of new snow had fallen within the past 24 hours. A fluffy white blanket lay softly on the trees and the housetops and filled the deep hollows in the frozen ground. Men in bright red flannel shirts drove horse-drawn logging sleds through the forest trails. And their shouts sounded sharp and clear, a crystalline tinkle in the icy air. Brambury looked like the place where Christmas was invented. It was beautiful. And very quiet when it came to putting out information. I found it out first when I tried the local telephone operator. Number, please. I uh, just checked in here at the hotel operator. There doesn't seem to be a phone book, so... Why, traveling people going through. Oh, uh, souvenir hunters, I suppose. How's that? Uh, look, I wanted to call the O'Dares. Could it's you put... not O'Dares. There ain't but one. That's old Mike. Oh, and that's the one I want to call. Would you mind ringing him? Won't do no good. He ain't there. He's slabbing up at number four mill today. Well, actually, it's his daughter I want to talk daughter? to. Daughter? Yeah, that's right. Kathleen. Do you know her? Just growed up with her, is all. Oh, well, would you mind... Are you a friend of hers? No, I've never met her, Where but... Where are you from? I came here from New York, What's but I... What's your name? Johnny Dollar. Now, will you please ring Kathleen? She not and... live here. She lives in New York City. I know where she lives. And what give you the idea she'd be up here? I'm psychic. You what? Look, where can I get in touch with her? I wouldn't know anything about it, Mr. Dollar, and I can't give out that kind of information. You better go on back to New York and write her a letter. Let me talk to your supervisor. Supervisor? Well, I'm all there is, so I guess that's me. Start talking. Forget it. You're welcome. I got the same kind of runaround from the hotel proprietor. As soon as I mentioned Kathy, he suddenly forgot his own name, age, and the time of day. One thing sure, this town took care of its own. I wondered if the law in Brambury would take the same attitude. I decided I'd better go find out. As it happened, I didn't have far to go. On the sidewalk in front of the hotel, the law came to me. Just a second there, mister. Hmm? I'd like to have a little talk with you, if you don't mind. All right. Quite a change to find somebody here who wants to talk. I understand you just got in from New York. Here on business? Look, you know why I'm here, but now everybody in town knows. Got any identification on you? Yeah, have you? My name's Martin, Dan Martin. I'm the deputy sheriff in charge of this part of the county. Oh, then you're just the man I was looking for. Is that so? I'm Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. I'm looking for a girl named Kathleen O'Dare. Do you know where she is? What do you want with her? I'm working on a murder case. She's a witness. Is there any kind of a charge against her? No, I just want to talk to her. What makes you think she's here? Are you a friend of hers, Mr. Martin? I've been in love with Kathy since we went to grade school. I'd be willing to die for her. Does that answer your question? All right, let me put it this way. You think you're helping her by hiding her out. All of you think so. But you're wrong. You're helping her right into her grave. Kathy doesn't figure it that way. She's scared. She doesn't know what she thinks. I know these boys who are after her. They don't play kid games. And sooner or later, they're going to find her. So if you love her and if you know where she is, you better take me to her before it's too late. I don't know. I don't know what it is Kathy's mixed up in. I didn't want to ask her. But I know it isn't the police she's afraid of. And I don't think it's you. No, at the time she ran out, I wasn't even in the picture. I'm on her side too, Mr. Martin, and I've got to see her. Go talk to her father, old Mike. See what he thinks. 
He's not at home right now. Yeah, I know. He's out at number four mill. How do I get there? The county pickup truck is parked down the block. The tire chains bit into the packed snow and pushed the four miles of logging road behind us. It was late afternoon, and the sun had dropped behind the timbered slopes, throwing a pale sheet of cold yellow against the western sky. Here and there, a few scattered lights were coming on, in the windows of the village and the bunkhouses of the lumber camps. Bright white smarks against the darkening shadows. Emptiness, loneliness, and somewhere in it, a frightened girl in hiding. A girl who'd run away from the city of a hundred million lights and from an unsolved murder. Michael Deer was winding up a job working at the big slabbing saw, and I stood by and waited for him to finish. Be right with you, Mr. Dollar. This is the last one. Okay. Of it now till after Christmas. Yeah, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. That's all right, Mr. O'Dare. My name is Johnny. Never mind, I know all about you. Dan Martin phoned, said you was on your way out. Mr. Dollar, the answer is no. I see. I've had it over since Dan called. Before I'd have anything happen to Kathy, I'd rather see ten murderers go and hung. Now, look, hiding out won't help. As long as Nick Shearn is free, Kathy's in danger. He can't hurt her if he can't find her? I found her, Mr. O'Dare. Just by luck. There's not one chance in a million of... Sounds like a car. Ooh, the tarnation would drive out here this time of the evening. We walked over to the big doors. The car had stopped about 20 yards away. A man got out and turned toward us. I was standing under the dock light, so he recognized me before I got a good look at him. He jumped back in the car and went for his gun. Benny Stark. Get back, Mr. O'Dare. It was too dark to get a decent shot. I tried once more. And missed, and the car disappeared behind the trees. Mr. Dollar, who was it? Was that one of them? That's right, Mike. They found her. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Nick Shearn matter tomorrow. Tomorrow, a lonely vigil in the snow, a killer prowls the night, and a lovely lady vanishes. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.